Hi, my name is Eileen Perez and I'm an astrophysicist and this is the similarities between a white dwarf and a neutron star. So they don't have a lot in common. In fact, they're, they're, the only thing that they have in common is that they are the last stage of a star. So how does a star die? Let's say if a star has a mass that is less, time, less than eight times the mass of our sun, our star will become a red giant and then eventually you will be left with an exposed core without any fusion process and this exposed core is what we call a white dwarf and at this point that star will be considered dead and it will have no longer uh, any nuclear fusion going on in the star. Now what happens when the star is a lot bigger than that? So if the mass of the star is bigger than eight solar masses, now we can talk about things like supernova. So there are two types of supernova. Type one and type two. At the end of type one, nothing is left. And pretty much destroys everything that it has. And type two, you become a neutron star. So as you can see, they're very different processes and they have very different ways to get to that remnant of the star, but it's whatever is left over of a star. And that's the only similarity between a white dwarf and a neutron star. I would like to say that a neutron star um, the gravitational forces of the implosion are, so, are um, so strong that the electrons and the protons are stripped away from the atom and you only are left with a neutron core and that's why it's called a neutron star. I'm Eileen Perez and I'm an astrophysicist and this is the similarities between white dwarfs and neutron stars.